Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'll give you a quick update on the Autel Evo 2 and answer some of the questions that we've gotten from viewers on the channel about this brand new drone. Now, if you're a fan of the channel, you know we were lucky enough to be invited into the pre-release test group for the Evo 2. So for the last couple of months, we've been flying this drone like crazy. Pretty much every day we've had good weather. I've had the battery charge and the drone up in the air, and I'm testing every aspect of what this drone can do. I'm comparing it to other drones that we fly. I'm putting clips out there so you guys understand exactly what this drone brings to the market. I've got a bunch more clips coming where I'm doing those one-on-one -on -one comparisons between the Evo 2 and all the other popular drones on the market because I know this is the time of year where all of us are getting a little bit itchy. It's been a cold, long winter. It's starting to warm up and we're all thinking about getting outside and flying. And I know a lot of people out there are kind of on the fence around their purchase. What are they going to buy come spring? So I want to give you as much information as possible so you know exactly what this drone brings to the market. Now, having said that, I think they've done an amazing job with this drone because they've improved certain aspects of it that really take this drone to the next level. There's four or five things that are in this drone that nobody else has today. So for example, 360 degree crash avoidance, which is at speed, which is unusual for drones. Most other drones that have it maybe aren't as good on the sides or aren't as good on the back. This one is amazing on a 360 degree bubble. And I'll talk about that extensively in another clip. It also has the ability to swap out the camera. I can't stress how important that is because what you're buying with the Evo 2 is a platform that you can buy today with the one over 2.3 sensor or eventually in a couple of weeks with the one inch sensor, but future cameras can bolt on there. And it's not just a matter of bolting a camera on, it's a matter of the product itself having all the video processing power inside to handle different cameras, maybe larger sensors, maybe cameras with zoom. So there's a lot of potential where you buy the flying platform and can basically bolt on future versions of the imaging sensor. So I think that's a really big deal. I love the fact that it flies longer. It flies further. It's even a little bit quieter than most of the quads that I fly to that size. So they've changed a lot of things about it. Any one of those would have been interesting enough to give this some time, but the fact that they changed three or four of them means they've really taken the Evo 2 and put it out ahead of all the competition out there. Now, because of that, I know the interest in the Evo 2 has been through the roof. I'm getting so many questions about the product. When's it coming? What's going on with it? There's rumors out there about, oh, it's gonna be delayed. You're not gonna see it until the end of summer. So I'm here to tell you today at the top of this clip, that the Evo 2 is shipping. So I've got that on confirmation from Wattel. You may have already gotten an email from Wattel if you pre-ordered it saying your Evo 2 is gonna be on the way in the next seven to 10 days. So expect them to ship soon. They're gonna be in stock in most of the stores pretty soon. Get those pre-orders in if you haven't done it already. If you're really seriously thinking about this, now's the time to jump on it. Now, I know that and I've said that before and I didn't really wanna comment on all the rumors about why it was delayed because they're really rumors. I, I don't think anybody really knows or cares to know, was it a firmware change? Was it a hardware change? What does it really matter? I mean, that's done, it's shipping. And I can tell you from my own personal experience, I received it in this box, which is the production box, the production unit, and I've had no problems with it whatsoever. I'm using beta firmware on it. I haven't even updated the firmware, but the beta firmware works and it's been flawless. I've had no funky flight characteristics. There's been no flyaways. There's been no image transmission problems between the drone and the controller. So everything has been rock solid from day one. And I can also tell you from a production perspective, the last thing to get done is the box. So the fact that it's in a printed box when it was sent to me means I didn't get a beta version of anything. I got a production model right off the line, which is pretty much what you're gonna get when the thing shows up. So it is shipping, it's a very exciting times, which means by the end of March, there are gonna be a lot of people out there that are flying the Evo 2 and doing clips like this. So good luck to all you guys with that. All right, having said that, there are a couple of questions I wanted to run through pretty quickly. I already did the top 10. These are five more that I've gotten pretty much from a lot of people over the last couple of weeks, so I thought I'd run through these. The first one has to do with swapping the camera. The question is, if I swap out the camera, because I've got the one over 2.3 sensor now, if I buy the one inch sensor later on, is it a big deal to install that? Are there firmware updates? Is there calibration stuff I have to do? How big a headache is that? Well, the honest answer to that is I don't have the one-inch sensor. I expect to have the one-inch sensor, a bunch of accessories, and maybe even a dual camera to test in the next week or so. But I've pulled the one over 2.3 sensor off quite a few times, put it back on. I've done clips on how to change that. And every time I've put it back on, it's worked fine. Now, I can tell you that the one-inch sensor is gonna use the same firmware that's in the quad today. So if you buy the one over 2.3, you buy the one-inch sensor down the road, you should be able to just pop it in the quad, boot it up and be ready to run. The only thing I will tell you would help you an awful lot 
is that you always want to do a gimbal calibration once you put a camera back in there because even though the mounting is rock solid, if you get it in there a little bit uh, off to one side or something, you may have an issue with the tilting horizon, but the calibration for the gimbal takes about 15 seconds. So if you're going to swap out a camera, don't worry about the firmware, but do that gimbal calibration and you'll be all set to go. So again, I think it's a wonderful way to be able to swap out that package and put a different imaging system in there. All right, the second question is around, are there more camera options coming? That's a really big question because Naturally, you're going to compare this to the Mavic 2 and some other quads that are out there. The Mavic 2 has a 1 inch sensor and a 1 over 2.3 that has the zoom capabilities on it. They're going to have a 1 over 2.3 and a 1 inch in the Evo 2 Pro, but there's no zoom camera for it. So everybody's asking, are they going to have a zoom camera? The honest truth is, they have a long line of accessories that are coming out for this. Now, I can't predict what those are going to look like, but let's pretend I'm working for Autel. I've now sold you a flying platform that I know I have an annuity to be able to put more cameras out down the road that my customers are gonna want. So they've got dual cameras coming, obviously a FLIR and a 4K, 320 or 640 in the FLIR, 4K in this, on the uh, visual side. Those are already gonna be released and those cameras will be sold, I believe, as add-ons that you can bolt on at the frame. Wouldn't it be cool if they came out with a larger sensor or a sensor with better resolution or a zoom camera or who knows, maybe a 360 degree camera that can bolt on there, hang down the bottom and capture 360 video below you. So there's a lot of options. I have nothing concrete on what might be coming from cameras, but I am talking to them all the time about that. And I've given them some suggestions based on the comments I've gotten on the channel about what cameras people would be really interested in. I think the zoom is probably the one that I've gotten the most response from viewers on because if you're doing any kind of inspections, being able to pull in tight on a bridge abutment or, or on, if you're filming wildlife to be able to pull in on a flock of geese on a, on a lake or something where you're far enough away is probably a good thing. So stay tuned for that. I'll continue to ask him that question. And as those things mature, I'm hoping we're going to be uh, involved with all those testings as well going forward. All right. The next one has to do with uh, return to home function. A lot of people asked if it has return to home. It absolutely has return to home. But people have asked, is it a precision landing on return to home? So I thought, you know, that's a great question. I haven't tested it. So I went out in the field and tested it. And I'll show you the results in a minute. But essentially, I tested it 25 times where I set it out in the field, 15 feet in the air, 100 feet out, or 150 feet out, hit the return to home button. Out of 25 times, I had four of them that seemed like a precision landing. And what was curious about it is they were one of the first five tests. So it was like four in a row, and then 21 where it didn't. So four it did, 21 it didn't. And I think at this point, uh, I'm going to have to say that it doesn't have precision landing. Now, I may be wrong on that. I'm going to continue to test it extensively. But again, remember, a lot of the drones that were released that's supposed to have precision landing, like the Mavic 2, didn't have it when it first came out. That was something they implemented in firmware later on. And to be fair to Autel, I want to give them every opportunity. Um, I have beta firmware on here, so I don't have the final version of the firmware. I've tested it with the beta. It's not in the beta. But it's something they probably will implement in the final version before it's released. It may even be on the drones that you're shipping now. So I'll look to get that up update and see if they introduce that. But currently, it does a wonderful job of returning to home. And as it's descending, if it's off the mat by a foot or two, you can grab the joysticks and guide it in. And I'll show you a clip real quick of when I tested it. All right, we're all set to go. I've got it centered on the mat. Let me spin up the rotors. Now I'm going to elevate it about five feet over the mat just to give it a second to fix its position because I want to make sure I give it every advantage possible before I take off. All right, that's plenty of time. Let me send it downfield. Now, I did notice a big turkey buzzard, I think it is, <laughs> sort of lazily flying around this field. So I'm hoping he doesn't take an interest in the evil when I put it in return to home mode, or I may have to intervene here. All right, I'm downfield about 160 feet, 16 feet off the ground. I'm going to hit the return to home key, and you have to hold that for about five seconds. Okay, it's in return to home mode, or right, immediately it starts elevating. It's up to 50 feet, 75 feet, and it should stop at 100. Yep, right on the money, 100 feet, exactly. And here comes the turkey buzzard. It's turning around and it's heading back for the mat. And he's flying the other direction, so I think we're okay. All right, it's flying back pretty quick. And right now it's over the mat and it's slowed down. It looks like it's trying to get its bearings. Maybe it's looking for the mat below it. All right, hey, that's interesting. It actually turned back the way it was facing when it took off the mat. So it's gonna land exactly the same position as it took off. That's a really good sign. It's coming down nice and slow. It's making some adjustments left and right. Just slowed down quite a bit. All right, it's coming down with a little bit more vigor now. But it looks like it's gonna be off the mat a little bit to the right. But let's see what happens when it gets closer. Oh, little adjustment there. Boy, that's close. That's really, really close. Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit off. I'm gonna to have to intervene there. So otherwise I'll be chopping grass with it. All right, so 
It didn't land exactly in the mat, it was close, but what that leads me to believe is that it's not actually using its downward facing cameras yet. So that's a feature they may have to implement with the final version of the firmware. And I'll definitely check with them to see if that's something that should be in there. But I'll try it a few more times and if I get one that actually lands on the mat and I can repeat it, I'll let you know. But that first test was uh, definitely not a precision landing. It was close, which is great, but I'd love for it to land right in the middle of that mat. All right, the next question has to do with, is it equipped for remote ID? This, this is a big controversial issue right now and I've done a bunch of clips on it. I got punished for doing the clips. It seems like a lot of people out there are, are really upset about it and rightly so, but they kind of hammered me with a bunch of thumbs down and nasty comments. I think remote ID is a good thing. I don't think the way that the FAA is implementing it is a good thing. I think they're going way too far. My suggestion simply would be, if you're flying a drone that can't fly more than 400 feet, shouldn't be any remote ID. If you're flying a drone that flies within visual line of sight like this one does, you should just broadcast from the drone over the standard Wi-Fi connections today. The fact is, they haven't made provisions in there for remote ID. They also don't have geo geofencing in it, and I don't think they have any plans to put geofencing in it. But with the remote ID, that's really simple to implement. Let's say, for example, the FAA tomorrow says, okay, we give up. We're just going to have you broadcast your remote ID from the drone. They could build that into the software. Other vendors have done that already, so that's a simple software addition to make it compliant for a broadcast type of remote ID. If the FAA goes all the way and says you have to broadcast and make a network connection, tweaking the software on this end to make that network connection over your cell phone is not that big a deal. So it's capable of doing that. It's not in there today, just like the NFZ zones aren't in there, the geofencing isn't in there, but I don't think it's that big a deal to add it. And even if they can't add it, that's not going to become law for three years. Now, the technology is going to change so quickly in three years that maybe you won't keep this drone for three years. And if you do, maybe they'll figure out a way to do it. So I wouldn't worry about that. But the honest answer is it's not in there yet. I know they're thinking about it. They've been talking about it. I'm sure it's something they can implement through firmware. All right, the next question and the last question has to do with other accessories. And this is kind of interesting because when you buy the drone, you buy it, you fly it, and all of a sudden you're thinking, what else can I do to trick this drone out? So some of the common things most people look for, based on my experience, is a case, a rugged case. So you can buy the drone as the drone itself, just the standard version of it, but they have a ruggedized version coming out as well, where you get an extra battery and you get a nice hard case with it and a few other accessories. That would be the way I'd suggest to go. So if you're thinking about needing a hard case, go with the rugged version, because you get the extra battery, you get the case. Both of those together are less expensive than if you buy them individually. If you buy it without a case, they're going to be 60 kit companies companies out there that are making cases for it, or you can go over to your local big box store and pick one of those pluck cases where you can actually get it with foam in it and pull the plucks out of it and create your own little case. But a rugged case is something they're going to sell. And from what I've seen on the Evo version, they're going to be really reasonable on that price and it'll have laser cut foam in it. But if you haven't purchased it yet, go for the rugged version because that'll give you the case and the battery at a good deal. Uh, battery charging hub is another thing they're going to be releasing. They released one for the Evo 1 and they're going to have a version of it for the Evo 2. And that allows you to charge up to four batteries simultaneously. Now, I haven't tested it yet. I don't know if that means in parallel or in series, like a lot of the other ones do, where they'll charge the least least depleted battery first and then walk through the other three. We'll have to see how that goes, but I have all those accessories hopefully on the way so I can test those and I'll put clips up here on the channel. But I think a battery charging hub would be great because even though this thing can fly a long time, you're gonna want more than one battery for it. And, and there's nothing fun about charging batteries one at a time and flipping through them. So having a charging hub is good. Another question I got, maybe a lot of you don't know about this, but Evo released a thing called a live deck for the Evo One. I should say Autel released it, which is basically a receiver that'll pick up the transmission stream from the drone and broadcast that to another monitor over an HDMI connection. So it's a really cool device for like first responders to use. So if they've got a, a table set up where they're looking for somebody lost in the woods, they can have a lot of people looking at a big widescreen monitor as that drone's flying over the woods. You still get the same transmission on your phone and on the remote, but it's also broadcast over this live deck product. So the question was, will it work with the Evo 2? And it will, so that's pretty cool as well. So I hope to have one of those pretty soon to test it. I'll show you how it works, show you how to connect it, and really what the value of that is. So those are three accessories that I know are coming. We're gonna have a ton of accessories at Drone Valley as well, so hit the website. We'll have cables and chargers and connectors and all the good stuff you care about, specifically for the uh, Evo 2 when it's released. So that's pretty much it for today, and I hope I got most of your questions answered. I've got a bunch more I'm gonna to get to. I'll probably put together one clip that just answers 10 questions in a row, but if I've missed anything that you're really curious about, you can always get a hold of us by hitting the link below and dropping a comment, and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. I love testing this kind of gear. I hope you guys are finding value in these clips because I have a lot of fun flying, and I know you guys love flying as well. And there's a lot of camps out there about fans of this one or fans of that one. And, and it's okay. I mean, everybody likes their particular drone. My attitude is always find something you can afford. Spring's coming. 
get out there and fly. Just have a lot of fun. If summer's coming, you're going to want to get up in the air and have fun with your family. There's nothing better than having the family out in a woods or near a lake in the beautiful fresh air and the sunshine flying a drone. So if this one makes sense, great, but don't wait, get something. And, and I like this one a lot. So just, just, just a thought. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks an awful lot for watching. I have a lot more content coming. We really appreciate the viewership. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button down there. I've got a lot more content coming. You're not going to want to miss. So thanks again for today. We'll see you soon. And until next time, happy flying. Thank you.